thank you that the, thank you for the word which you are confirming oh god your word says and they went forth everywhere preaching the word the lord working with them confirming the word with signs following thank you for the signs and wonders of the word of god thank you lord for signs and wonders in finance signs and wonders in healings signs and wonders in families signs and wonders in every area of our lives oh god we thank you for the spirit of wisdom and revelation and the knowledge of you that the eyes of our understanding will be flooded with light that we may know what is the hope of your calling and what is your glorious inheritance in us as saints and what is that incomparable great power which is available for us as believers the same power which you demonstrated in christ when you raised them from the dead and set him at your own right hand in the heavenly realms far above all principality and power and might and dominion and every name that can be named not only in this world but also in that which is to come and you placed all things under his feet and gave him to be the head over all things to the church which is his body the fullness of him that filleth all in all thank you for open scriptures open eyes and open understanding that we may be able to behold he who is the son of god thank you for rhema which will be imparted to each and every person thank you that nobody would live here like they came in the mighty name of the lord jesus christ and the church say amen, amen. hallelujah you may be seated in the presence of the lord hallelujah Hallelujah. Greetings in the wonderful name of our Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Welcome to our Tuesday teaching service, our Living Logos service, um, where we, we teach the word, we expound on the word, you know. I genuinely wish we had more time um, to really teach the word because it takes time to teach, you know. We can preach for an hour, but uh, teaching really, really requires a whole lot of time. Hallelujah. It requires a whole lot of time. So I pray that you give yourself to these things. The little that you have, give yourself to them. You know, uh, we need a lot of time to teach. The Bible says Jesus would actually teach for the whole day, you know, for the entire day, you know, and that produces a particular caliber of people when we are able to teach over prolonged periods of time amen so please give yourself to the teachings we've made them available to you they are available at the media desk for 20 rand a tape and also the videos are available on youtube you know for you to uh, for you to be able to watch hallelujah we are doing our best to ensure that the content is there you know so that you are without excuse you know um I was talking to a certain pastor, you know, about, uh, you know, the, 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 the expectation of ministry, right? That uh, in a ministry, we have expectations, right, as your pastors, right? And these expectations is not, uh, we're not talking about tithes and offerings, you know, uh, but we are talking about you becoming a product of the word that we teach, hallelujah. To prove that you are a child of the house, you must be a product of the house. You must reflect the message of the house. Hallelujah. If a church is strong in prayer, the children are supposed to be strong in prayer. Amen. If the church is strong in the prophetic, the children are supposed to be. We can't find you not being able to prophesy in the church, right? If the church is strong in the supernatural, the children are supposed to be that way. I remember Apostle Maldonado, he said, you know, if you don't walk in signs and wonders, you are not my child, you know, no matter how long you've been in this church, you know. And so one of the things God is doing in this church heavily, right, is, is bringing us to a place, you know, and I remember I said this, um, I said this last year, you know, I said it by faith, you know, and uh, it's, uh, it's, it's happening. And I said, uh, Jesus' tabernacle of prayer will begin to be known as a house of wealth. You know, and that's one of the big things God is doing, right? He wants to establish us all financially and 
in the areas of our callings, right? And callings, I'm not just talking about, you know, fivefold. I'm talking about uh, the mountains of society. That's what he is emphasizing right now, even in the days of power, you know, even in the days of power, he's really, really emphasizing your establishment because what you need to do for God requires that you be well established. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. The purpose of money, the purpose of prosperity is not so that you can have, you know, uh, yogurt and uh, tin roof ice cream, you know, in, uh, in your fridge, you know. That's not prosperity. That's not the purpose of prosperity. The purpose of prosperity is so that you can do your assignment in the earth. You see that? You need money to fulfill destiny. Amen. You need what? Money to fulfill destiny, right? You need money. So, you know, don't view money as this thing, you know, it's just, don't, don't have the survival mentality, right, as it pertains to money. Don't ask God for money as it pertains to your next need. Think bigger, think destiny, hallelujah. Your destiny requires that you be well-resourced. And that's one of the big things that God is emphasizing. So even though, you know, even though we are a house that believes in healing and all these things, there was a time where God, in every season of the house, God emphasizes something particular. It doesn't mean we've thrown away, you know, everything else. You know, it's, a, it's just that he's emphasizing something. You know, when you are in, when you are in the science class, right? When you are in the science class, I'm going to go before you choose your subjects, uh, uh, go from grade 10. I don't know what they do now, you know, but uh, before you, up to grade nine, you don't choose your subjects. Your subjects are set for you. You don't come into science class and then think, or, when they teach you science, they've abandoned everything else, right? You believe that this particular class, this particular phase, this is the emphasis. Amen. It's the same thing with the kingdom. There are times where God, because, you know, uh, it, 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 let me give another example. If you were to go to a, a, a restaurant, right? Go to a restaurant and there's a buffet, right? There's a buffet and at the buffet you start to eat and all these things. Okay, at the buffet everything is readily available for you, right? Right? Everything is what is readily available. But you don't take everything at one time. Do you take starter, main and dessert all at the same time and you're like, I'm eating. It's time to eat. Even though everything is available, you need to eat things uh, uh, in periods, right? You need to start with your starters, then have the main course, then have the dessert. The, the fact that you are on main course doesn't mean that you hate the starter or you hate the dessert, right? And the eating of dessert doesn't mean now that uh, you have left uh, the main course. Languages is alright. So at every given point, so it's that way in the kingdom of God. At every given point, God will emphasize something. Hallelujah. So right now, one of the biggest things God is emphasizing and confirming right, and putting light on is favor and prosperity because it's very important. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I'm saying this so that you are able to flow with the frequency of the house. If this is not happening in your life, get the tapes. Soak yourself in them. I can tell when you're not listening to me. You know, I can, I can just tell. You know, I can sit with you. I will listen to you. And I'll be like, I'm good little motto. You know, you're, you're not listening to me, you know, because if you were listening to me, this thing would, it would produce. Hallelujah. It would produce. Like, Pastor, uh, 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 I remember I heard Pastor Chris say, if he says, there are people who say, I'm, I, I've listened to the tapes and I still don't know what to do. He says, you've not listened enough. You listen to the tape over and over. When it gets full, you will know immediately what to do. You will know immediately what to do. You will know exactly what to do. The correct thing to do, which will produce the necessary results. You see, there are actions that produce the necessary results in your life. Results are not by chance. Amen. All right. So, okay, let's start with something foundational and then we will go into the message, right? So I'm concluding the series, right? Whatever I did not say, the Holy Ghost will say to you. Amen? Amen. Amen. You know, it's the, it's the truth. You know, whatever I did not say, whatever I threw in the atmosphere is for your study with the Holy Spirit. Hallelujah. 
and as hungry as you are, he will give you more. If you're not hungry, he will, he will not give you more. Amen. The things of the kingdom are pursued. Hallelujah. They are pursued. So, okay, some thoughts about the word, right? Faith always operates in the context of the word of God. Hallelujah. The entire kingdom is, okay, I wanted to open this on Sunday, right? Uh, Mark chapter 4. Mark chapter 4, verse 1, I believe. Yeah, verse 1. You know, when I was coming here, né, there were these angels né, that came to the meeting in Easter this year, right? There were angels that came at Easter. These were angels that forced things to happen. They force things. They, like they, they, have un, they look unkind, right? They force things. They, if, if you had a solid rock door that couldn't open, they force things open. And when I had experienced them then, I could sense their strength in that it's not safe for these people to be around because they manifest things, you know. They manifest things. They force things to happen, you know. So when I was coming, the Lord said to me in the Holy Spirit conference, he says they're going to be there. These angels are going to be there. But he said they are coming to remain now. Amen. I was like, hey. You know, I was there. I'm like, hey, you know, I... I I, you know now, ne, the things of the spirit make me tremble to think, my God, if this is what has been happening just by these angels coming and leaving, what is going to happen when these angels rest? These are angels of, you know, I, I could best call them, this is me calling them, ne, I, I could best call them angels of breath because they force things to happen. They, they, they force a matter to happen. If you had a case that was very difficult, when they arrive, they make it happen. Yeah, I'm just saying this because I'm sensing a, a particular spiritual atmosphere, you know, but it's for, it's for <laughs> the conference, you know. I'm just, I'm noticing the atmosphere, right? So, Mark, Mark, Mark chapter 4. Again, he began to teach by the sea, Right? And a great multitude was gathered to him so that he got into the boat and sat on the sea. And the whole multitude was on the land facing the sea. Verse 2. One, two, three, go. And he taught them many things by parables and said to them in his teaching. Mm -hmm. Listen, behold, a sower went out to sow. Wait, he taught them many things, right, by parables. Then he said, listen, a sower went out to sow seed, right? He taught, when he taught many things by parables, he really taught those many things in the parable of the sower. I will show you, right? The many things he taught were in the parable of the sower, right? Now, let's, let's rush again, right? Same, same chapter 4. Verse 13. Oh, the Iba Sutakaba. Read. One, two, three, go. Yeah. Yeah. Wait. So all the parables were actually contained in this parable. All the parables, right, were contained in this one parable. It was the master parable. It was the master key. It's like it can open anything. So it was, though you have sub parables, but this one controls the in entire discussion of the kingdom. Right? Now when he teaches it, he says the kingdom of God oh, is like a man who went out to sow seed. He's saying that the entire function of the kingdom is by sowing seed. And then he tells you that the seed is the word of God. 
which means the entire kingdom rests on the release of the word of God. Everything in the kingdom waits for the word. If the word is not sown, the kingdom cannot function. The forces, the power, the, the virtues, the excellencies, the glories of the kingdom rest with the word. And that's why anybody who has the word has the kingdom backing them. Are you hearing me? He says the kingdom of God and I told you the kingdom rules over all. So that which rules over all sits and waits for the word. And is attracted to those who have the word. Listen to what God said. He says, he says heaven is my throne, earth is my footstool. He says, uh, 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 where is the place of my rest? Because I've made everything. He says, but to this person I will look at. He who is of a poor spirit and of contrite heart. He says, the one who trembles at my word. He says, my attention is on the one who trembles on my... The word gives the kingdom a place to look at. Are you hearing me? And that's why the greatest thing you could ever get is the word of God. Okay. Okay. I, I, want, to, I want to bring up some thoughts, right? Before I teach. Ne? So, I just need you to give me just extra time. Baruna nte baby tang extra time. Because the last match, Baruna le extra time. All right. Ne? The Holy Spirit follows the word. I need you to write that down. The Holy Spirit follows the word. Right? The Holy Spirit follows the word. He follows the word. What is the word of God? I, did I say it on Sunday? Did I say what the word of God is? I didn't say what the word is. No? I didn't. No? What is the word of God? The word of God is not the scriptures. Right? The scriptures are the, the, the written expression of the word. But the word of God is not the scriptures because the word existed before the scriptures. Amen? The word existed before what? The scriptures. Right? Now, we know by personality the word is Jesus. Right? We know that the word is Jesus. He is the word of God made flesh. Right? But when we define the word... For example, you have the scripture in the book of John chapter 1 verse 3. It says, all things were made through him. Without him was not anything made that was made. It tells you there is nothing God has made. God cannot create without the agency of the word. He says, all things were made through him. Meaning the word is the door to all things. For anything to come into the realm of existence. Now, language of Azalan. For anything to come into the realm of existence. Now, I'm not dealing with, I'm not dealing with physical existence. Oof. There are things, my God. Oh, karabasha katanaba. You know, can you follow with me? Yeah. There are things that I uncreated even in the spiritual world. Kiri, there are things. Now, the law of once again my examples, me and my examples. Come, come, pastors, Mr. Mdu, come. Right? There are things that are uncreated. Now, this is the physical world, right? And this, these stairs are the spiritual world, right? This. Come, Mr. Mdu. This is the realm called God. Languda. This is the realm called God. God is a realm. He's, he's, he's not just a personality. He is a realm. Things can exist in him that do not exist in the spiritual world. Hallelujah. The Bible says, I saw a new Jerusalem coming out of God, out of heaven. Meaning it was not in heaven, but it existed in God. 
When you deal with heaven, you are dealing with the highest of the spiritual world. The highest location besides God in the spiritual world is a place called heaven. Now, the new Jerusalem does not even exist in the highest location in the spiritual world. It exists in a place called God. Now, for anything to come out of God into the spiritual world, it requires the word. Are you hearing me? The word is the agency for God to take out anything out of himself. So there are things that God carries within him that he has not spoken. And for as long as he has not spoken them, they cannot exist even in the spiritual world. So in the spiritual world, this thing is not even known. Hello. Hello. So for anything to move from the spiritual from God, this realm called God into the spiritual world it requires an agency called the word the word is the one who brings things into existence even in the spiritual world now in the earth nothing is allowed to exist that does not already exist in the spiritual world are you hearing me? But in the spiritual world, nothing is allowed to exist unless the word releases it. So when he says all things were created by him, he's talking about things invisible and things visible. Things in the spiritual world and things in the natural world. And that's why Satan cannot create. Because for him to create, he would need to speak the word of God. He is unable to create. Are you hearing me? For him to create, he must speak the word of God. But, but what is the word? What is the word? Mm. What is the word? The word, right, is, 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 this, is, not, just, is not just the thought of God. Okay, I'm going to show you something. Uh, Please run here, right? I want to show you something about the word. What the word is. The word is not just, is not just utterances. Oh. The word is not just the utterances of God. Because we have seen Satan speaking the utterances of God. Oh. He, Satan can repeat what God said, but that you repeated what God said does not mean that you spoke the word. Mm. Uh, he says, as God really said in the Garden of Eden, he repeated what God said, just that like he perverted it, but he repeated what God said. And when he was with Jesus, he says, he says, for he has said, for he has said, he quoted the scriptures. But it doesn't mean he spoke the word. What is the word? I want to show you something, right? I want to show you something, right? Just look forward. Just look forward, right? Stand here. Stand here. He's your husband, so nothing. <laughs> ne? Just, just say, speak John 3, 16. Loud, so that we can hear you. For God so loved us. Uh -uh, your wife. Oh. Speak it to him. Yeah. That he gave his only begotten son. Yeah. So, now speak it like you are praying. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son. Okay, tell me, what is happening right now? It's not just sound that's coming out, but breath is also coming out. You missed me. It's not just sound. But breath is coming out. So what is the word? It is the sound of God with the breath of God. That's why he says every scripture is given by the inspiration of God. By the breath of God. When man speaks, he doesn't only release words, sound. He also releases spirit. So what is the word of God? It is the utterances of God that are filled with his breath. 
So that's why Satan cannot, he can repeat the sound, but he cannot replicate the spirit that makes the sound possible. Are you hearing me? So when we deal with the word of God, we are not just dealing with uh, what God said. We are, really, we are dealing with the breath. Do you hear when she speaks? It's like you feel something. When someone speaks close to you, you feel something. So when God speaks, it's like when, when the Bible says, and God breathed into man, it's not that he just, no. He breathed into man by speaking into man. The Bible says he said, be fruitful. When he said those words to man, man became. He, be, he came into an awareness. It was words and breath. Sound and breath. So Satan can repeat, but he cannot release the breath. Language is that right? What makes the word the word is the fact that it is the sound of God, but also the breath of God that is coming out. When those two come out, something called creation takes place because this breath carries creation. <sighs> Where is that scripture in the book of Psalms? I believe I highlighted it. It says, it says, it says, by the word of the Lord were the heavens made, right? It says, by the word of the Lord were the heavens made, and by the breath of his nostrils they came into being, right? Meaning it was speaking and breathing at the same time. Huh? Languti is it? So, that's why I say, the Holy Spirit follows the word of God. It's what? It's Psalm 33 verse 6. 33 verse 6. Let's look at it. I just want us to see this. 33 verse 6. Okay. 33 verse 6. Oh, yes. And I, yeah, I highlighted it. I was right. Aha. Let's read it. Look at this. He says, by the word of the Lord, where the what? heavens made and all the host of them by the what breath of his mouth he's really relating the fact that when god is speaking he's also breathing that's why the bible says by his spirit he garnished the heavens but at the same time it was by his word you think that it's two separate experiences no they are one that's why jesus says the words that i speak unto you they are life and they are what spirit Uh-huh. When a person speaks as well, ne? it's not just wind that you feel, right? There is also the evidence of life. What you call smell is the evidence of life. Oh. So when a person is speaking, three things are coming out. It is sound, it is the wind, but it's also the smell, the evidence of life. That's why he says we are the, the, the he says we are the surveyor of his knowledge. To some we are the smell of life, to some we are the smell of what? Death. So Jesus says, the words that I speak, they are what? They are spirit and they are what? Life. Are we getting this? I'm saying this so that you can understand what's going on, right? Okay, you can sit down. I'm trying to lay a foundation. For what I'm concluding. So every time God is speaking. Right? So if God. Says favor. Right? It's not just the sound of favor that's coming out. It's the spirit of favor that's coming out. And the life of favor that's coming out. Language is that right? The Bible says. While Peter yet spake these words, the Holy Ghost fell on those who what heard the word. You see that? He fell in, 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 on those who heard the word. Ezekiel says, while he was speaking to me, when he spoke to me, what happened? The spirit entered what? Me and set me on my feet. So when he says, when he speaks on prosperity, there's also a spirit that comes in. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. 
There's also a what? A spirit that comes in. But here's what then also happens when God speaks, which is a powerful thing, right? It, it's extremely powerful, right? When God speaks, right, he pulls you to the realm of what he is communicating. Can we open some scriptures now? Uh, just hold on. Let's open uh, Chronicles 21. Chronicles 21. First Chronicles 21. Eh? Right? Let's read verse 19. Verse 19. Right? Can we read this? Can we read this, Bazal? Leading, yes. Bazal? Okay, let's read. One, two, three, go. So David went up at the word of God. Wait. David went up at the what? At the word of God. Not God. Right? God. Yeah, yeah God. What the Americans call God. Ashwin, God. God. <laughs> Which speak, who, which, who, uh, which he had spoken in the name of the Lord. Meaning he was prophesying. Right? But when he spoke, come, come here, come here, sis. Right? Stand here, Pastor Mike. So when God stands, maybe God is speaking from a realm of, let's say this is the realm of healing. Right? Now, at first glance, right, there is the... Kilifadi principle, ne? Once again, I am giving you what keys. <laughs> Timothy. Ntoi kilifanya na king. Yeah. Right. So the first is that the spirit transferred, right? But then he says he went up at the saying of God. Yes. Right. So if God is saying favor, right? Favor is a location in the spirit. It's a realm you walk in. It's not, it's, it's not just a confession. It's a realm you walk in that causes people and things to respond to you in a particular way. Prosperity is, is, is not the handling of physical resources. It's a realm that pulls resources. You understand that, right? So, when God is speaking, now, you say, when is God speaking? When the man of God is preaching. You see, when I'm preaching like this, the Bible says they were, the, the church at Thessalonica received the words of Paul as the words of God himself. And he says that was the reason why the word worked in them. You know, the Lord taught me, Ari, Ari, stop, stop creating, stop creating uh, 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 human, human theologies for things I never said, right? So, we believe that Sometimes we need to speak the word, right? And then it's yes, back, all right? But there's a church. It's called the church at Colossi. He says, from the first day they heard it, it began to bear fruit. Sure. He says, it's unnecessary. You are creating human ideologies. There are people who would hear. This is what about those who came to hear and be healed? They were healed that day. They were healed immediately. So it depends on your openness. If you are open enough, listen to what John says. He says, I heard a voice speaking to me from a door that was set open in heaven. He says, when the voice spoke to me, he says, immediately I was in the spirit. Oh. When he was able to hear properly, immediately he was transported to that realm. That means if you can hear me properly, immediately you are transported there. You leave the service there. Ah. You leave the service where? There. We can literally make you travel in a service. Ah. We can do what? We can make you travel in a service. He says he went up at the what? At the saying of God. Okay. Galatians 2 verse 2. Come again. So he what? God spoke. And then he what? He went up. Yes. Right? Galatians 2 verse 2. What does he say? 
One, two, three, go. So when revelation is released, what happens? You have the option. Are you going up? You see, it's an open window at that time. You have a choice. Am I going to go up right now? Oh. Are, you hear, are you hearing this? He says, what? Uh, I went up by what? By revelation. Oh. Is witness number two, right? Witness number two. Revelation chapter four, verse one. Revelation chapter 4. He says, After these things I looked, and behold, a door standing open in heaven. Sometimes you could be in a service and you can realize, ah. Oh. You, you know what it's like? Ne? It's like that man where the stirring of the waters was taking place. You could be in a service and the waters are steady. You are stirred up. You have the choice to jump into that realm. Oh. Are you hearing me? Yeah. It could be a door of prosperity. It could be a door of healing. It could be a door of, 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 of employment and business increase. It could be a door of salvation. Oh. Huh? He, says, after, he says, I saw a door standing open. It was open, right? And the first voice which I heard was like a trumpet speaking with me, saying, come up here, and I will show you things which must take place after this. Look at the next verse. He says, when, read it, one, two, three, go. Does he say after five days? No, he says, immediately I was in the spirit. That means immediately, and he says, behold, a throne set in heaven. That means he walked in. Now he was in heaven immediately. Immediately he was in a realm. Because he chose to be open to the speaking of God. Ah. Ah. Ah, ah, yes, all right. I'm trying to show you how to because if I just teach, then you won't know how to come into it. You will think this is sometimes something. No, 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 no. The, the door stands open, all right. Uh, uh, Luke chapter 4. So he says, immediately he spoke, and then immediately I was there because I heard it and I believed it. Yeah. Now, chapter 4, verse 4. Uh, no, no, chapter 4, verse 18. Right? He says, The Spirit of the Lord is upon me because he has anointed me to preach the gospel to the poor. He has sent me to heal the brokenhearted, to proclaim liberty to the captives, the recovery of sight to the blind, to set at liberty those who are oppressed. Yeah? To proclaim the acceptable year of the Lord or the year of God's favor. Right? Uh, he says, <laughs> Then he what? Close the book. Ah. Uh, and gave it to the attendant, right? And sat down. And the eyes of all who were in the synagogue were fixed on him. Next verse. Huh? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. And he began to say to them, Today, oh, he says, Today, this scripture is fulfilled in your hearing. Listen, ne? listen, 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 listen. Ne? He says, it is fulfilled in your what? In your hearing. What did he say? He says, when they heard the Holy Ghost, right? When they heard Peter speak, he says, the Holy Ghost fell on those who heard what? The word. That means that you can come into the experience immediately. Are you hearing me? Okay, you can sit down. Maybe, a last one. Can we take a last one? I'm trying to show you how you can come into this. Let me show you. Nah. He says, he says, who's this person? Who's, 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 who's this person? Uh, David. He says, your word is a what? Is a light unto my what? Path. Right? And a lamp unto my what? Feet. Right? Does God not say that? Hallelujah. <laughs> Praise God. <laughs> you know, when he does that and you are trying, <laughs> it's like it's more, <laughs> it shoots up even more. <laughs> it's like Peter when he was sinking, you know. <laughs> but he says, it's a light unto my path and a lamp unto my what? Feet. Right? Somebody say light. light. 
nothing in the universe is faster than light. Okay. Someone go to Google. Ne? Just say how, how quickly, ne? how many times ne? can light travel around the earth in a second? Ne? How many times can light travel? This is what we call the speed of what? Of light. Right? So, how many times can, the, can light right, travel around the earth in a second? Nah? In a what? In a? Say one. one. Say one. one. That was the second, right? How many times? <sighs> how many times? 7.5 times. In a se- when you said one, light went around the earth seven and a half times. That is the speed of light. <sighs> so, when we speak the word, what are we releasing? Light. So, light is in and of itself speed. Are you hearing me? Light is in and of itself what? Speed. If you can see it at that time, you can come into the reality. The key is to see it. <sighs> Are you here, Bazalwan? The key is to what? Is to see it. Okay. Acts chapter 4. 14. Acts chapter 14. <sighs> Seven times. Say one. <laughs> your, your mind can't even relate. How? So when the Bible says, O oh king, for, live forever. There is a man in your kingdom in whom is the spirit of God. In the days of your father, light. He says, when God gives you light, he gives you speed. Amen. That means by this, you are allowed to be seven times faster than the best man on earth. Take the most intelligent person on earth. Light gives you the ability to be seven times better than the best in the earth. Light. Light. He says, then he says, the entrance of your word, gives it gives what? Light. Speed. Yes, sir. The entrance of your word gives what? I don't have to be, I'm going to show you. I'm going to show you. I don't have to be slow anymore. My life. The, that's why God can say, I will restore to you the yes. Yeah. Because he gave you speed. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Alright. Nah. Go to Google. Ne? Go to Google. Ne? I, I, this is how you study. You see, your study needs to be practical. You see, if it's not practical, author light, light, light. The word of God is light. But like God is using your terms. I mean, think about Jesus says, you are the salt of the earth. Go study salt. Language yeah. is that right? Nah. <clears throat> Say, how long does it take to travel on foot? Ne? On foot. How long does it take to circle the earth on foot? <laughs> ne? Okay. Uh, uh, go to verse 6. Go to verse 6 while they look. Go Google. Okay. Uh, uh, 7. Verse 7. Aha. Uh-huh. Yeah, verse 7. In how many times? 8,300 hours. 8,300 8, hours. Uh, divide that uh, into uh, days uh, in, in, in our relatable terms. I, I'm trying to show you what, what light gives you. Are you hearing me? I'm not Googling the scriptures. I'm gonna, I gotta Google the scripture. <laughs> we are helping, we are trying to get a universal understanding of a term, right? And I'm doing it for you in practical ways, right? 
How many hours? How, how many days? Oof. Ah. Oh. My God. Ah. Is that right? Eight years. How many? Eight years and nine months to circle the earth once. Just what? How one? Right? Just say eight times seven and a half. What is it? Eight times seven and a half? What is it? Light gives you an advantage of 16 years. Oh, think about it. Ne? The entrance of your word gives what? Light. A 16 year advantage. No. In your field. If you can get light concerning your field. If you can see the word in your field, he says the entrance of your world, if light can travel around the globe seven and a half times in a second, that means God gives you 16 years in a day. No wonder David can say, better is one day in your courts than a thousand elsewhere. It means I can leverage time. Oh. By the word, by the entrance of the word, just by seeing. Can I practicalize it? <laughs> and they were preaching there, right? And they were, uh, verse before, verse, and they were preaching the what? The gospel, right? Then it says, yeah, and in Lystra, a certain man without strength in his what? Feet was sitting a cripple from his mother's womb who had never walked. He had never walked from his mother's womb. Now, how long does it take a baby before he can fully walk properly? <sighs> he heard, next verse, right? This man heard Paul speaking. He heard Paul speaking. What did he do? He heard Paul speaking. You are hearing me speaking. This man heard Paul speaking, right? Paul observing him intently and seeing that he had faith to be healed. Because faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word of God. He said with a loud voice, stand up straight on your feet. Do what you have never done in your entire life. My God. Oh, are you hearing me? Listen. With, listen. He had never walked from his mother's womb. From his mother's womb. Let's estimate, maybe when they say a man, you must be around 30 years when you are a man in Israel, right? So he must have at least been 30 years. He is doing something he has never done in 30 years. Stand up straight on your feet. Huh? And the Bible says he jumped. Oh. Hi, 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 hi. The Bible does not say he crawled. Ah, That's why if you can hear the word correctly, you don't have to crawl. You can walk in that realm. Ah, Are you hearing me? You can walk in the realm of that thing straight. You don't need to crawl in prosperity. Oh. Ah, you don't need to crawl in favor. You don't need to crawl in the wisdom of God. You, can, you don't need to crawl in your eyes. Just hear the word. And the Bible says, by hearing the word, you can just jump. He says, by my God, I have leaped over a wall. We can leap over walls just by hearing the word. That's what he says. He says, to you who hear, more shall be given. <sighs> Stand on your feet. And he leaped and walked. Ah. Oh. When the people saw what Paul had done, they raised their voice and they say, the gods have come down. He did, you, you don't understand. It's not that the man had, had, had walked before in his life. He had never walked. Sir. Mm. <sighs> Colossians. I didn't even get time to actually say my message. I was just trying to put a foundation for the conclusion. Thank you for the foundation. <laughs> Colossians chapter 1 verse 3. We give thanks to 
the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, praying always for you. Yeah, since we heard of your faith in Christ Jesus and your love for all the saints, yeah, because of the hope which is laid up for you, which you heard before in the word of the truth of the gospel, which has come to you as it has also in all the world, which is bringing forth fruit as it is also among you since. Hey, Basalwan. Are what? Are since the day you heard it. That means you can bring forth fruit from today. You can call me tonight and say, Pastor, I have a testimony from today's message. I didn't go agree. You can, you can call me tonight, send a message tonight and say, Pastor, here is the evidence of the word. What you suppose has happened immediately. The Bible says Jesus would speak. The Bible says the same hour. Yeah. <laughs> the same what? Hour. Matthew chapter 13. I have coke. Mm. You see why I want to get people to, get, to understand the word? Because the entire kingdom it depends on this thing. The Holy Ghost is limited by your excess of knowledge. Is limited by your excess of knowledge. There are things he can do by his grace, Nje, but even that is limited. He needs you to have knowledge for him to begin to work mightily in your life. He needs you to have the word. That's why go for this thing. Sometimes just listen to it, binge it. Uh, listen, ne, listen, ne. Try this. Ne, try this. Ne. If you are at home, you, you, you have not found employment yet. Wake up in the morning. Listen to me the whole day. Listen. Listen to me the whole day. Listen to me. Listen to me. When you go to the toilet, listen to, listen to all the tapes I have on YouTube. When you are done. When you are done. When you are done. When you are done at 10 p.m. Listen to me until 10 p.m. When you are done. Speak one word. <laughs> I'm, I'm, I'm not, you see, I'm not, I'm not trying to tantalize you. I'm not trying to get your votes or anything. No, 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 no. If you have me on WhatsApp, I'm, people, I mean, there are testimonies galore. Ga, 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 ga. Galo. I mean, it's testimony. I'm overwhelmed. When I think this testimony is coming, oh, another testimony. When I think this testimony, oh, another testimony. Oh, all right, all right, let's relax, let's relax. Oh, something's about another testimony. It's not Joe. It's because this thing is effectual. Let's read. I want to conclude here because. Shata di brakata. Do you love the word? Verse fourteen. Verse fourteen. Do you see verse fourteen? All right. Can we read verse 14? One, two, three, go. Yeah. Yeah. Ah, uh -uh. wait, 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 wait. It says, hearing, you will hear, and not what? Understand. Right? So, what did, what, what, what did wisdom say? He says, he, he says above all, Get understanding. In all you're getting, get under. Can I show you a scripture? Am I teaching good? Yes, sir. paraya. Proverbs 13, 15. Proverbs 13, 15. Ravuel la kwale. Iring. Level, 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 level. Good understanding gains favor. Hearing you will hear and not understand. When you are unable to understand, you lose out on favor. I'm, I'm, I'm setting you, I'm giving you keys. Understanding. Understanding gives you what? Favor. It's there. It's there. I didn't create it. It's there. 
with good understanding, uh, good understanding gains what? Favor. <laughs> Maybe chapter 4. The Mishambe chapter 4. Huh? Verse 7. Read. Chapter 4, verse 7. Wisdom is the what? Principal thing. Ne? Now, ne? wisdom is the principal thing. Therefore, get what? Wisdom. In all you're getting, get what? Understanding. Aha. Uh -huh. Exalt her. Exalt what? Understanding. And she will what? Promote you. That's your promotion. <laughs> he says, she will bring you what? Honor. When you what? Embrace. He just hug understanding. <laughs> the entrance of thy word giveth light. It gives understanding to the simple. Understanding gains favor. Understanding promotes you. She will place on your head an ornament of grace. A crown of glory she will deliver to you. Yeah. Hear my son and receive my say. And the years of your life. No need to die early. Let's go back to Matthew. That was by the way. Imagine, just by understanding, you gain, you gain favor. So when you understand, you gain favor. When you don't understand, you lost favor. And I told you, favor is a currency that's higher than money. Go back to the, aha, uh -huh, let's read it. One, two, three, go. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Uh huh. Yeah. 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 Now, Jesus is about to say something very scary here. Yeah. If I say, please do this, right? It's a request, right? If I say, Timothy, you should do this. What did I do? I commanded you. Yeah, that's okay, let's read this. Should is like shall. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Lest they should see with their what? Eyes. And hear with their ears. But the purpose of seeing and hearing was for what? Understanding with their hearts. Then he says, then they will what? Turn. Meaning they will be transformation. And I hear. He says, I should. He says, I am forced to do it. All right. This was in the area of healing. If you could, what? See with your eyes. The word on prosperity. Hear with your ears. And understand. And you would be what? Converted. And he should prosper you. He is forced to. He is obliged to. He is locked to doing it. Can we stand up in the presence of the Lord? Lish up. It was the foundation of the conclusion. <laughs> you'll conclude with the Holy Ghost <laughs> the Bible says that man had faith to be healed you can have faith to prosper you can have faith for your marriage you can have faith for healing you can have faith for wisdom you can have faith for anything you just need to hear the word in that area when you hear, when we teach on the gifts of the Spirit, it's not just the speech. The gifts of the Spirit are imparted. Yeah. 
you see that the grace for them is imparted when we teach on wisdom the grace for wisdom is imparted the, this is what makes the house of God so distinct in that in everything that we speak there is power that backs it up hallelujah hallelujah go for it go for the word lock yourself with the word I keep telling you over and over right this is what I did in my field you see that it will work for you in your field if you can get the word of God in your field of on prospering in your field it's there in the Bible the Bible has every single thing there is no circumstance that lacks in the Bible you just need to go for it but like I always say what what Isaac said to Esau says when you become restless when you become what restless when you get tired of it you will destroy the yoke praise the Lord I am done we're gonna pray and then we're gonna give hallelujah